Welcome to Business Minds on Breakthrough TV. I'm your host, Hope Hungero, and joining us today is Beverly Johnson, founder of JLB Shipping. JLB International Limited is an international freight forwarding company with subsidiaries JLB Shipping and Logistics Limited UK, JLB International Foods, Johnson's International Freight Forwarding Network Limited, and Isaacan JLB International. Among self made business owners, optimism is up. Can you give a little briefing on the vision and how it all came to be? Thank you. Thank you for having me today in your studio. It all started out of a lack of promotion. I've worked in the logistics mm. industry for many years prior mm. to starting my own business I, in Jamaica. Mm. Uh, so I started in logistics back in 1981 and I worked for um, some of the powerhouses in transportation and logistics. An opportunity came for me to have a scholarship in logistics, and I was denied that scholarship because I was a female, and wow. it was offered to somebody else who did not even have the capacity I had, or the, 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 the achievement I had in, in, in logistics. Mm -hmm. And I felt I was undermined, and, and, uh, you know, and, and so I decided that I would go and start my own business. Mm -hmm. And I left the company, um, having spoken to the chairman and says, you know, if I'm not given the opportunity for promotion, then what's the point of being here? Because I think I've done very, very well for mm -hmm. your company and I should be rewarded where these opportunities present themselves. And so I left the, um, the employment and became my own boss in 1989. Mm -hmm. And as the saying go, I started this all on my mom's front veranda. Um, so I, I took a bold step. And um, JLB International, our parent company, is in Jamaica. It started out with three girls, um, Johnson, Lynn, and Bennett. Um, in the early months, the other two decided that they prefer to stay in the industry, in logistics, working for their employers. Mm -hmm. And so they left it all. And I decided I would just go along with it and, and, and keep it going. And 31 years later, uh, we have established yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've established a number of subsidiaries under the JLB group of companies, and um, the stories are, you know, endless. It's endless. <laughs> yes, this I started really shipping in logistics in 1981, and I happened to be in shipping and logistics just by chance, because really I studied um, to do um, to be a dietitian. Uh, and you know, my, my, my older sister went to a shipping company for a job interview mm -hmm. and the, the, the remuneration they was offering her was probably too low. Mm -hmm. And so she came home and she said to my mom, send her for the job. <laughs> <laughs> and so I called the company and I said, I'm, I'm aware that you have a vacancy. I'd like to come in for an interview. And um, I went and I was successful and I've never looked back. So that all started because my sister felt that, you know, what they were offering were too low, and my little sister could do and do it that kind of wage, yes. and I'm I'm happy for that. I always thank her for that opportunity. <laughs> I I'm not I'm not sure she sees it that way. <laughs> Actually, she does, and because of her fate, she she keeps reminding me that it was mine and not hers, and that's yeah. a good thing. So good thing. we talk about it a lot and laugh about it a lot. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, the company name is pretty self-explanatory. But can you just give a breakdown on what services you offer and what JLB is all about? Well, JLB International Limited, which is a parent company, which is in Jamaica, we are a logistics supplier. So we do everything from procurement to delivery. Mm -hmm. So if you wish to, to source an item, you can come to us to source the item for you. Uh, we'll make the payments on your behalf. We'll arrange a transportation by any mode of transport, whether by sea, air, land or rail mm -hmm. or a combination of both. And um, we will take it to the, the ultimate um, destination, um, to the buyer's point on, of receival. And so we're a full service logistics company. So there's no shipment too small or none too large. We do all the special projects for our governments. We do special projects around the world. And we facilitate the small to medium size exporter by doing our weekly consolidations out of our facilities in Jamaica mm -hmm. and in the United Kingdom for those persons who are not able to make their own containers. So we offer everything. So we do air freight, air courier, we do um, LCL consolidations, we do full container loads, we do project shipments, mm -hmm. 
We do roll-on, roll-off services. We really do everything. <laughs> the gamut of, 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 of logistics, oh, export documentation, processing. We guide persons um, into how to go about starting up an export opportunity. Yeah. We're just there for you because one of the things you might not know is that I also am a trainer, a facilitator in international freight forward and logistics. I've worked for many years for UNCTAD, Trainmar. I used to teach right across the English-speaking Caribbean on shipping and logistics. Uh, I, I train a uh, former trainer for the Jamaica Customs on you know the line management training mm -hmm. program. I train for the the management of Institute for National Development in Jamaica in international freight forwarding. Mm -hmm. I'm a lead on the JAMPRO, Jamaica Promotions <laughs> <laughs> training. So not only do I provide the service, but yeah. I'm also a trainer. I like to impart my knowledge yeah. so that other persons can gain the information that I have and the knowledge that I have and start their own business and be successful at it. And that I've helped a number of persons to do. So I'm not worried too much about the competition. Mm. I think if we train each other, then we all can grow together. That's amazing. Yes. Thank you so much. And that's what makes you a community leader. Amazing. That is correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, in recent surveys by the National Federation of Independent Businesses, 16% reported they were planning to fill new positions compared to 9% the year before. When did the vision become a reality for you? Obviously, you started the planning and you were working for your business. When did it start working for you? When did it start giving back to you and you start to see, wow, this is success? Well, I was always strategic. So when you look in, you're supposed to see needs. So a lot of what I have done over the years in transport and logistics is born out of a need. So from the very outset, all the businesses that I've, in, I've taken on have been successful because I'm filling a need. Mm. You know, sometimes people will go out and they will start businesses because they think it's fashionable. Mm. That's not smart. Mm. You start a business because there's a need for that. You're filling that gap. So, for instance, JLB International, JLB Shipping and Logistics in the UK and Jamaica, we are the number one cargo consolidators out of Jamaica. Um, moving small to medium-sized exporters goods right across the Caribbean, Central and South America. Mm. And that's because we wanted to have a niche. Um, so we, we, we make sure we understand the rules of entry, the laws of the governing countries, mm. and then we, you know, we coin it so that it suits our, our own. Mm. And we were able to provide that service to our people, to mm. our exporters, whether it's a small entity or a large entity. Because we believe that export is what drive economies. Mm -hmm. um, and so we offer those consolidation service because the big players can fill their own containers, but the small people who mm -hmm. have something that they can offer to another destination don't have the capacity to fill containers. Mm -hmm. So we went in and we said, okay, we will provide that consolidation for you. Mm -hmm. We will ensure that your shipments will get to their destination mm -hmm. in time at a reasonable price so that you can be sustained and you can grow. My view in life is that we must help each other to grow. And yeah. that's what we do. And the same thing applies here. We come into this market in the United Kingdom and we offer that consolidation going out of the United Kingdom to the rest of the world, whether by air freight or sea freight, we consolidate shipments and thereby allowing the cost to the, to the, to the exporter to be reasonable Definitely. so that the cost to the end user can also be reasonable and competitive. Yeah. So we don't just think about our profitability, mm -hmm. we think about sustaining economies. That's amazing. So you're pretty network networked women. Like, uh, what kind of corporations do you work hand in hand with to make your life easier? Because obviously you're you're making services for others easier and making them affordable. But how do how do you make that work on your side as well and sustain yourself as a company? well for us? Um, we look at the network in the world. I mean, I don't think any company now could be sustained without the support of a network. Mm. So. I might be the owner of JLB International, but I can boast mm. that I have a network of agents around the world. Mm. It's about forming a membership or an alliance with a group of like-minded mm. organizations that do what you do at the professional levels and standards that you expect them mm. because of the delivery that you wish to offer. And, and that's what we've done. So we are able to say to any customer, for instance, to go to Namibia or to go to the Congo or to go mm. to any parts of Africa, 
we can find you a service because of the network of agents that we have created through our membership with the various agencies. And we also ensure that we are recognized by the, the various governing bodies that relate to transportation. So we are members of FIAT, which is the highest level of recognition. If you're in international freight forwarding, you need to be a member of FIAT because that allow you to operate in a standard of this level, a high level of practice, and that is kept us. So we have a number of agents, a number of membership, a number of networks that we're related to, which gives us inflows and outflows of businesses, and that makes us successful. That's amazing. Um, is there a particular place your headquarters are located uh, currently? And if so, why those locations? Well, I'm a Jamaican. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a proud Happy Jamaican. Day, and it's way. my Independence Day today. And it's the reason I'm in my green and my gold is underneath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am a loyalist. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a true to true Jamaican. I'll never take that back. Yeah. And so the head office of JLB International is in Kingston, Jamaica. Mm -hmm. We also have a branch of JLB International in Montego Bay, Jamaica, because we believe that we're supposed to be strategically placed uh, as to where our services are needed. Mm -hmm. And so we have ensure that. So we have uh, JLB shipping and logistics here in the United Kingdom. Um, and we have a network, um, Johnson's International Freight in Jamaica and in Trinidad. We have JLB International in Canada, and then we have Enterprise Caribbean, which is an, aid, an arm which affords persons to buy authentic Jamaican products because there are so many counterfeit products mm. in the marketplace. <laughs> so we will say to an individual, if you'd like something truly Jamaican or truly of the Caribbean, you can come to us and we will source that for you and have that delivered to wherever in the world you are. So that is what Enterprise Caribbean does. We do purchasing on behalf of person of authentic products because wow. a lot of the people who are in the foreign country, they mm -hmm. are not able to discern or to identify mm -hmm. what is a counterfeit product yeah. versus an authentic product. Definitely. I love custard oil. So if you're telling me I might be using a counterfeit custard oil, I need to come to you. Because that is I correct. <laughs> that is correct. And that, that's the success of Enterprise Caribbean yeah. and the JLB International food arm of the business because we facilitate that service. We do all the customs formalities mm -hmm. for persons to ensure that they get what they've ordered and that they're satisfied. And of course, we also have um, ISACON JLB International, which is a joint venture partnership between mm -hmm. myself, um, JLB International, and a Scottish entity. Mm -hmm. And that came out of a need, because I do believe that anyone who wants to start a business mm -hmm. simply need to recognize or identify a need yeah. if you need something and you have approached five or six persons mm. to fulfill that need and they're unable to do it mm. there lies a business opportunity Definitely. I might just take that on myself someday <laughs> um, how many employees do you have and how has the team grown from the beginning Wow! it was a one-man team how did it expand <laughs> naturally when I started I actually started with three persons myself and two others yeah. um, and, and that started on my mom's front veranda. Yeah. Today we employ over 35 persons. Uh, of course, Jamaica has the largest grouping. The United Kingdom has about eight. Mm. Um, and, and Canada has about four. Uh, and the, the ISACON JLB facility has five persons there that manage that system. And that system is a very unique one because mm. we move all of the bulk liquid our facility manages maintain calibrate service repair wow. all of the isocon the, the yeah. iso tank tank containers that move bulk liquids around the world and that's the operation of a woman that's an operation of a woman <laughs> this woman is a superwoman to me right now <laughs> In line with that previous question, uh, in the same survey, it stated that businesses reported an utter lack of qualified applicants, like with background and training, personality, behaviour, thought process. How do you deal with, um, with that? What's your employment scheme? And I'm going to surprise you. Yeah. Because persons with university qualifications, persons with um, certain attitude to work, mm. I don't necessarily employ quickly. Mm. Because I'm a trainer, I like to take people who has a passion and a desire for growth, mm. and then I'll train them. 
So most of the persons that I'm employing are not necessarily university qualified people, mm. but they have bought into the vision. It's pointless you having someone mm. that thinks that they're brighter than you and not contributing to the growth exactly. and the success. Mm. Um, so persons that I've employed, all my employees, are, are persons whom I felt that they might be um, related to a family member, they might mm -hmm. be somebody from a community who just need to be given a chance, um, they might be somebody who might have been problematic to their parent, mm -hmm. and the parent says, can you help me with my child? That's amazing. And I d just turned them around. That goes back to your community. Yes. <laughs> community, like you are a big part of community. Yes, you know, yeah. not, sometimes even my children will say, mom, and I go, just leave me. It mm -hmm. has worked, and I see no reason to change it, because mm -hmm. I found that persons who are necessarily uh, academically bright, mm. um, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I do think that they should be looking to start a business so that yes. they could engage and employ mm. um, persons and take so many idle, uh, idle minds away from the streets. So exactly. I really go out there and befriend. I find if you befriend people, I find if you set a standard mm. in your operations, I will say to my employees, you know, between the hours of eight and five, I am Miss Johnson. Mm -hmm. Thereafter, you can call me mom, you can call mm -hmm. me Auntie Bev, you can call me whatever. But between eight and five, it's about the business. That's amazing. Um, for a long time growing up, having an international business was an idea only for a very specific group of class. Um, but the ideology has been completely overthrown. And um, could you just explain why is it important to see more independent businesses grow and thrive to the extent that JLB has? It's important because the more the more businesses you have, the more employment you'll have, the more lesser crime will be. Mm. People won't be as idle because I find a lot of the a lot of the um, the, the the negatives in society is because people are not given opportunities. Mm. So I think for those of us who have our PhDs and for those of us who have a master's degree and for those of us who has a business idea, we should really try and make it work, bring life to it mm. so that we can create employment. Mm. I never knew when I started with just myself and um, uh, another lady that worked for me previously um, and one young man that today I would be employing yeah. 35 to 38 persons. I started out providing a service for the free zone operators. Mm. Today I provide a service across the globe. Yeah. So I have, I have evolved as the need arises mm. um, within the logistics fair um, of transportation. Yeah. And I think persons should see that as a, as a mean. I mean, I work very closely with the lower um, communities um, mm. because I do believe within those communities are people with a passion yeah. to be successful. Definitely. I wasn't born with this present state. I was mm. born with a single mother who worked very hard. Mm. I have two children. Um, I was a single mother. Definitely. And I, I, I do believe that if we all help each other, we can do better. Because yeah. I feel like we live in a society, I'm not sure, I can't say what it was like 30 years back because I was still growing. and. In this day and age, people just want to see things happen very quickly. They want to see success. They want to see quick time success. They want to go on YouTube, make a video and become famous. That's like we have based our success so much on time frame. But how do you encourage um, young people like ourselves to realize that if you want to see something successful and see it expand, it takes time and work and years, not two months, not three months, but years of work. And that is something I must tell everyone because... Even when I started JLB, we came into a period back in the 1990s where I could have just said, you know, enough is enough and close the doors. Mm. But an opportunity came and I was able to second myself to Air Jamaica Cargo Operations. Um, the then chairman um, offered me a position at Air Jamaica whilst I still had my business mm. because he was told that if you want somebody in logistics, you need Beverly Johnson. <laughs> So, of course, I was able to say to my chairman, sir, I will come and run your cargo operations, but you must know I'm not giving up my mm -hmm. business. I was bold like that because I believed in myself. And all I had to do was to employ a manager to run my business mm -hmm. and go to Air Jamaica to run their cargo operations. And whilst it was there, it, it allowed me to grow even more into the understanding 
of air cargo operations worldwide. I work for the greats like Emory Worldwide. I work for the DHLs of the day. Mm. So I've had those opportunities which allow me to take those information yeah. and focus them into my business so that we are a specialist in what we do. Definitely. And so just to answer the question about young persons, don't give up yeah. at the first hurdle. You need to be able to get over the hurdles and you need to find a method. Mm. If you did athletics, you'll know that once you're training as a, as a hurdler, you have to find a method mm -hmm. that will allow you to go over those hurdles clean, yeah. a clean hurdle. So don't give up. Just find the method to get over the hurdles Definitely. and continue that journey. Definitely. Um, how has the social media age contributed? Because it's such a big part of the 21st century and it's obviously something that's developed even as your business has developed and it's probably at its peak and how much it's influenced the business world. Um, how have you implemented um, social networking into your business? And I will tell you, I only just recently started doing that. <laughs> Before now, I was old school. Yeah. I did believe in the old telex, the telefax, yeah. you know, the advertising by radio and television, mm. um, the, the, the written media. Mm. Uh, so the, the social media aspect of it, though it is there and I have access to it, I only recently had to engage the service mm. of, of a young mind. And mm. this is where I think um, corporations, um, small businesses need to recognize that we have so many young persons who have all these IT skills and these social media skills mm. that you offer them the opportunity of just launching your, your businesses mm. um, through the social sites. And the rest they say is history. You just grow it. It's, it's, but unless you begin to engage the people who has the capacity and the knowledge to do it, because I will never take the time myself. But I know that if I engage the service of a skilled person, then of course the business will grow and I've done that. So that has been successful. Yeah. So again, I encourage that we do engage the minds of the yeah, young people. Definitely. They are the next generation of the smarts, I call them. We are useful. Yes, you're the, I call you guys the smarts. I think you all are so, so smart. It's yeah. unbelievable. Thank you. Um, of course, we can't ignore that as opportunity has widened, everybody uh, wants like on social media, you see young girls doing their own businesses, like shipping hair. Obviously, we, those services, they go through you. We might not know that, but we are literally, we just get the product. So how do you stay um, on top in a competitive industry that has widened so much? How do you make sure that you, you make sure that you, we get to you the leeway, even though we're not directly connected with JLB International? How do you grasp those opportunities? Well, we have our niche. Because one of the things you must never try to do is everything. Yeah. So our niche markets now is really ocean air consolidation mm. and multimodal consolidation. Um, we do a lesser extent of the smaller shipments like the air couriers in terms of your orders going through the Amazons and, the mm. so, on, and so on. Um, so I say that persons should identify the, their niche markets mm. and work assiduously at those markets and grow with them. So our market base presently is commercial cargoes, regardless of their size, and the personal effects markets and the special projects markets. Mm. Um, we are not necessarily um, keen um, on the e-commerce market, but only yesterday I had a conversation mm. with somebody wishing to engage our service into e-commerce because they're told that I've worked with the, the, the various arm of yeah. transportation and my knowledge is so wide. Mm -hmm. And so this is something we're venturing in. That's our project for the 2020, 2021. Amazing. You know, so each, every five years we look at what can we do differently. Mm -hmm. Hence the reason that we have the subsidiaries of the JLB group of companies. Yeah, amazing. And that's how the company continues to and grow. And that other companies continue to grow. <laughs> that is correct. Amazing. Um, being a businesswoman, a mother, a community figure, a woman of faith, like how do you find the balance? It, it's just, it sounds like you have this library in the back of your mind, you're just pouring out knowledge and, you know, how do you com compose yourself and maintain your sanity? <laughs> well, first you have to learn that you have to find quality time, yeah. which I coin my me time. So there are times when I just shut down the business aspect of it. Mm. I shut down the family focus and I just stay in a quiet space mm. just to rejuvenate the cells. Yeah. So that's my me time. But the rest is quite easy because the people who are busiest are the people who get things done. Mm. And, you know, so 
if you want to get something done, ask somebody who's who's involved, somebody who's busy, mm -hmm. and they will they will have the connection. So it's not necessarily that my hands are on everything, but my yeah. pulse is on everything. Okay. So I can connect to you. I can I can be a part of, and so that has worked. It really has. So, and I I, I I'm very committed to my faith. So that I will never uh, yeah, pass up. You know, but um. Once you once you engage people, and once you give them autonomy, mm. and once you respect them, and once you reward them, mm. the rest is easy. Yeah, you know? I guess that's part of being the boss, isn't yes. it? Like I was just gonna go into that question. Um, what? How do you define being a business owner? How do you delegate yourself? Some leaders they lead by delegating. Some leaders lead by taking on the full responsibility. But you're a delegator. I, I, the first thing I do is I befriend, befriend. And, and, and I see you as family. Yeah. So if you hurt, I hurt. If you're happy, I'm happy. Yeah. And that's throughout all my businesses. That's through all, mm -hmm. all, all the people I've employed. That's throughout all the people I've interacted with. So, for instance, if you need the support of getting your first home mm -hmm. and you're not able to find all of the deposit to go to the bank yeah. to be able to get your mortgage and you come to me, I must be able to help you. Mm. If you're going back to school to qualify yourself and you have a shortfall of the, the, the charges of the institution, mm. I must be able to help you. If you have a member of your family who's unwell and you need some support, I must be able to help you. If you have a bereavement and you need support, I must be able to help you. Mm. Because it's not about you just working for me eight till five. Yeah. It's about you. It's about your family. Mm. 24 hours, 365 days a year your family so you know and and even when persons have left the organization and gone and started their business and they come back mm -hmm. we support them mm -hmm. it is how we engage and how we keep our hands tightly together yeah. knitted as a unit that keeps us going you know so I tell to people, I'm not bothered by competition. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> I feel like working for JLB Internationals. I don't even know anything about logistics, but I feel like... I mean, like <laughs> I'm sitting here in the United Kingdom and I have, mm. what, 27, 28, no, 30 people in Jamaica. I'm not there with them every yeah. day, but um, with technology, I'm able to speak to them and they know they can call me at any time mm. and they run the business based on the instructions that I've given and it's going successfully. You know, and I remember when we started um, Isacon JLB, we got a contract to move the bulk liquids out of Jamaica. Because if you know, mm -hmm. um, Jamaica has seven distilleries. So we move a lot of the, the rum, the alcohol mm -hmm. beverage from, from in bulk equipment. Mm -hmm. And there was no facility on the island or throughout the Caribbean that could clean or repair or test or calibrate or certify mm -hmm. those tanks to make the liquids food safe. And I said to an, an entity, I says, who normally cleans your tanks when mm. they're in the United Kingdom? Mm. They gave me a name. I jump on a train. I went down to Scotland. I invited the Scotsman. I said, come to Jamaica. <laughs> Let me give you something to eat, some good oh, jerk chicken, yeah. <laughs> some good red striped beer. I have an opportunity, which yeah. I need for you to replicate. Amazing. Take up what you have in Scotland and position it yeah. um, in Jamaica mm -hmm. and teach us um, yeah. how to do it. And, you know, we have done that. And hence the reason for Isocon JLB, the only ISO tank maintenance facility within the Caribbean. Amazing. Again, by a woman. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. You are doing, you're breaking barriers. You're paving way and you're leaving a legacy already. It's amazing. Yes. Um, what advice would you give? Because I know you've already helped so many people find themselves and go their own way. And you've built so many people. But what advice would you give to someone who might not have direct um, interaction with you? How could they start their business and how would they, you know, build and carry on? Well, the first thing is to find a need. Yeah. In whatever business you do, there has to be a need. If there's no need, because sometimes um, businesses are already saturated with too many people in it. Mm. And I remember as a child, when we used to go to the dentist, I used to say to uh I'm scared to go. And I remember growing up years later and the, the dentist would say to me, the reason why you came was because I gave you a lollipop. <laughs> Other dentists never gave you a lollipop. Yeah. So when you're doing business that is, you know, everybody has the same model, mm -hmm. for instance, fashion or hair, yeah. everybody wants to sell Very hair, nice. everybody, but you have to do it with, with a plus plus. Yeah. 
So like the dentist, he gave the child a lollipop. The mm. child felt secure and safe because this person is kind. So it's the, it's how you position yourself mm. in, in, in doing business that makes it makes it good for you. I would encourage any person that wants to get into business, identify, use even your family members, friends and associates, have a survey mm. and let them give you their honest opinion, even if it's not in your favor, mm. but listen, because they are the consumer. Yeah. Call them the consumer. And whatever advice they give you, use that to structure your business and Definitely. you can start your business. Um, I'm s well, you use an international company and it's um, obviously with borders and all. I'm sure you use services of a professional attorney, accountant, anything of that kind. You know, you could um, could explain that a little bit more. Obviously, as the business has grown, you that's compulsory in some way. It is. The first thing we do, we give every member of staff a life insurance. Mm. They don't have to make a contribution to it at all. Mm. So we ensure that because we recognize that in troubled times, sometimes you're not prepared. Mm. And as a family unit, we feel that we should support you. So um, that's the first thing. So we ensure that everybody, we encourage persons also to contribute to their pension. But as a business, for us to be, our liability to be safe and to be protected, mm. we have our company attorneys, we have our insurance um, companies that does, we have our auditors, mm. we have accountants, and we have regular meetings. Yeah. And they will sit there and tell me, you can't do that, and you yeah. can't do this, and that's doing right, and that's doing well. And that's good, because you must not have a business where everybody agrees with you all the time. Of course. Because that hypocrisy, <laughs> that's not truth. Yeah. You know, sometimes person will have to guide you. Yeah. You know, things are changing. We never expected COVID-19. Mm. Things are changing. So the way you did things yesterday, there's a new normal today. Mm. You have to adjust this way. You have to adjust. Yeah. And you must be ready to adjust. Because if somebody with more knowledge mm. is informing you, then you do your due diligence. You check to make sure that the mm. information you're getting is accurate. And then once you've confirmed the accuracy, then you make the changes. Amazing. Um, in line with that, I wanted to. Uh, you mentioned uh, the consumer, the customer. It's always about the customer and meeting the customer's needs. But customers are not always the easiest people to deal with. I'm sure. As much as Beverly is smiley and lovely, I'm sure there's people that will crawl under your skin. And um, have you ever had to turn a client down, or have you ever had to deal with someone in a way that you couldn't work with them? Not necessarily an, another organization, but more of a client. You will be respected when you say no. Yeah. Don't ever forget that. We've had customers because of their 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 stiff neckedness and their attitude to not wanting to listen and we know that if we take it on we will be embarrassed in the outcome mm. we will say no mm. we've had customers who are abrasive a little aggressive and we will speak to them to say if you continue on this path we will have to say no um so yes we've had many reasons to say no and we have never regretted saying no mm. because i've had many a time the persons i've said no to last year will come back to me this year and says I now understand what you were trying to tell me. Because yeah. sometimes they have to go find somebody else to provide a service. Mm. Then they will run into some brick walls and realize, oh, but Miss Beverly had said, Miss Johnson had said, mm. and they come right back to us. Amazing. So I find that no is not a bad thing. Yeah. You know, you, you have to say, we don't do it like this. And if you wish for us to handle your shipments, mm. you have to conform to our. So for instance, in logistics, we have known and unknown shipper. If the shipper is known, then of course the scrutiny is less. Mm. If the shipper is unknown, mm. then we have to enforce our security regulations. Definitely. If the customer does not wish to comply, then that's a no. Mm. There's no hard feeling. Mm. It's simply a no. You don't it's wish to come. It's, it's, <laughs> no, it's just, it's just me securing what we've built over these years Definitely. and not allowing anybody to come in and use our facilities Definitely. or use our services for their means and get us into Misusing trouble. the service. Misu misusing of the service, Definitely. yes. Wow, thank you so much, Beverly. Uh, we've been educated on what JLB is all about, what your services you provide, and how you've built community as well, not just the business, but a community, and that's so inspiring. Thank you so much. Thank you, Beverly Johnson, for joining us today on Business Minds. And please be sure to check out JLB Internationals and all services they provide. Beverly, any last words? Yes, uh, to know more about us, you can visit our website at www.jlbshipping.com or www.isaconjlbshipping.com. 
and you'll see all of what we do. Uh, and just to say, I'm very encouraged um, to be here today and to be given the opportunity to talk about the success of another um, black woman in business of the Caribbean, of course, and who s would like to say to persons, expand your markets. You know, when I started back in 1981 or 1989, starting my own business, I never believed that I would have expanded my markets, you know, to the countries that I'm now positioned myself in. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity. The world is a dot com away. So once you are successful in one entity, Definitely. expand your markets to new to new horizons Definitely. and watch your business grow. Amazing. Encourage persons. So many of us, um, we tend to just have a single outlet. You know, I like to teach people on franchising, how to franchise your business, mm -hmm. how to expand your business. You know, great bosses are never sitting behind the desk. Mm -hmm. They employ people and they have branches all over the world. I encourage others to do just that. I'm your host, Hope Hungero, and thank you for joining me today on Business Minds at Breakthrough TV. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and for further inquiries, you can reach out to Breakthrough TV. Information will be provided in the description. Be sure to check us out on all social media platforms as Breakthrough TV.